this pleasure to be doing this with, uh, with you all here today. My first round of the testimony was 36 years long, so I've had to cut this down because I've been told there's a time limit. My name is Matthew Hunt. It's a privilege and an honour and a true blessing to be here today. Uh, ever since I was saved, then found out that at baptism you get to do a testimony, I've been considering what to say here. Uh, and have, have decided this is just the intro for what will be the rest of my life. So this has five points. Goals, deception, deliverance, salvation, and my ongoing testimony. Goals, I was raised uh, with some faith, went to a Catholic school, but, uh, but, but strayed. I had the wrong goals and it took me a while to see that. Storing treasures where moths and vermin could destroy and thieves could break in and steal living in the world. I hoarded my sins and spent a great deal of my blessed life with my attention in places that provided no value. On being saved, I was flooded with memories of countless situations where I didn't realise that I was watched over and loved, protected and tested, failing lots of tests and carrying on blindly to, blind to reality. For decades, I'd racked up a long and horrifying list of falling short of, where, of what we're here for, Parties, drugs, greed, hollow relationships, relationships I've, I've, relationships I've ruined, selfishness, competitiveness, etc., etc. The, uh, the, uh, the list goes on. But somehow I always told myself that I was a good person. I should be dead. I should be dead a hundred times for many reasons and still my whole life until this year I didn't see. So goals moves into point two, deception. I worked in media and advertising for about 14 years in what is a giant industry of deception, changing consumers' minds to increase sales, climbing a ladder at the expense of people, the earth, and what we're here for. This is a life of superficial excess and self-interest that you wouldn't believe. And I've enjoyed studying Ephesians. Martin, thank you. The emphasis of this continuing giant is now the attention economy leading up to the year of trust. This got me thinking last year about the ladder that I was climbing. At first, I thought these were just another couple of buzzwords, same old thing, but no, the less trust and attention we give, the more aggressive it becomes. It's not just ads, entertainment, media posts, and so forth. So months have built up through last year. First couple of days in the office this year, thank you. It's been great. I've got to go. Deliverance was unexpected. So I had no idea what I'd inadvertently signed up through signed up to throughout my, my life. I view this now as the Bible believes it, that we are lambs, that we are sheep. Fine if we carry on. The enemy has limited resources and puts attention to where it is needed most. If you stay in line, you may not necessarily know, but once you stray from the herd, they turn their attention. Fear factors out God. I learned that evil is real. Spiritual warfare is real. I didn't yet understand it. I didn't know why, but I felt I needed my sister, a believer, to teach me how to pray, to pray. I bought a Bible from the op shop, having searched far and wide through bookstores, only to find spell books, spirituality, crystals, new age spirituality, and so forth, by the dozen, but no Bibles. I've done those. They're, they're what has got me here. I need the Bible. I found one. I slept with it. I didn't read it. I started coming here hearing some of the sermons, it sounded like they were written for me. Obviously not, but God was working in, in, uh, in that way. It increased continually, more and more. Months researching this from an intellectual point of view first. What is this? Why is it here? Why do we have it? In early March, my, this year, my soul broke, my body broke. I was done. I had to know evil was real and then believe intellectually that the Bible is real, that it's true it is an instruction manual for our life here. And the next step just happened. I got on my hands and knees on the battlefield, unarmored, in the middle of a, another figuratively dark and stormy night. And I repented. I wept as a servant. I'm not God. I'm not a God. Or just some lump, lump of flesh and bones. I was wrong. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I'm yours. So salvation is step four or five. I've practiced this a lot of times, but it's not until you stand in here and realize how crackly your voice becomes. <laughs> I believed and then I received. Everything was already known. I knew my sins. He knew my sins. He was always, always right there. 
him there with me, and, uh, him there with my back turned. I changed my mind, and it was like, I know, it's okay, welcome home. I'm still getting the hang of this, but it's moved from self to selfless. I'm now learning to walk with the armour of God, which it would have been handy to have known earlier. The belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, boots grounded firmly in peace, shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And James chapter 2 verse 19 tells us that even demons know God is one and they shudder. And they do, despite how much they attack or attempt, they shudder. I testified to that. I invited them slowly into my life and they're not here anymore. So this broader machine is telling us that everyone is a wolf, hate each other, compare each other, compete and take from each other, fear each other. It's a very good way to conform, to not think, to live in fear of everything, to keep us in danger, to keep us from helping each other and others. And the very first Bible verse I was ever recommended here earlier this year, the first one in my life, was Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So the world tells us not to think. The word of God tells us to think. There are indeed wolves. They can count their takings, or they can shut up. And the screw tape letters by C.S. Lewis was an absolutely amazing read. Jesus Christ knocked on my door repetitively, quietly, patiently. I eventually answered, he eats with me and I eat with him. We are created, we fell, but we are loved. Mark chapter 2, verse 17. On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. And John chapter 3, verse 16, the one they'd hold up in the wrestling in the early 90s as a kid that I never paid attention to. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So to wrap up the intro to my ongoing testimony, which will be carrying on for however long I'm here, I should be dead a hundred times. I didn't realize how much I was protected, challenged, and looked after. I died the spiritual death that night and am born again. And now I get what that means, even though I'm, very, I'm still very young. It's actually a thing that many of you have known for a long time that I just had no idea about. It changed everything. No anxiety, no fear, no isolation, but joy, peace, solutions, and a blessing to be able to share the truth. And Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7, we should recommend this ahead of unnecessary products and services that the machine kind of pushes. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. I'm a sinner in service, humbly renewing my mind, having given myself, along with my trust and attention, to God through my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The only thing I fear now is falling short of his good, pleasing and perfect will. I love how you introduce that, Matt, when you say... This is the introduction to my testimony. And my prayer for both of you, Matt and Talia, is that today is not the pinnacle of your life, your spiritual life, but this is the start of a journey. And that in 30, 40 years' time, you'll look back and you'll see how that, how that journey has taken you and how, how the Lord Jesus Christ has walked with you through the ups and the downs of life. But we want to pray for you, and I'm going to suggest if you both come up here, and maybe one of you over there and one of you here, so, Lord, for Matt and for Talia, we pray and we commit them to you as they take a step of faith and a step of courage. Um, would you give them the eyes to see how you're going to lay out their life ahead of them? Would you give them ears to hear you at every step of the way and eyes to see and to discern what's happening in their situation? Would you give them your heart of love? Would you give them the mind of Christ? In Jesus' name, we commit them to you. And all God's people said... Amen. Bless you guys. Thank you.
do. Do you turn from living your, your way to following the way of Jesus and his rule? I do. On your profession, on your profession of your faith, and at your request, I baptise you in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. extravagant love and his wildly outrageous mercy and his grace. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe as you're watching, you'll be prompted to be up here. We can refill this next week or the week after.